In this video, we are going to study heteroscedasticity with Bruch Pagan and white test in Python using Spider IDE. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, this is an educational video only and no professional advice is included within it. Okay, so let's go into Spider IDE. So the first step within the video, which we're going to comment here, is we need to import the corresponding packages. Therefore, step one, packages. And for this, we're going to import statsmodels.apiassm. We're importing that feature from statsmodels for data downloading. Then we're going to import statsmodels.formula dot api as smf we're importing that feature from stats models for multiple linear regression calculation then we're going to import stats models dot tools dot tools as smt we're importing that feature from stats models for adding a constant or intercept to independent or explanatory variables and last we're going to import stats models dot stats dot diagnostic as smd and we're importing that feature from stats models for push pagan and white tests to run these code lines we go ahead select them and we can either cl click in run selection or press f9 on the keyboard then we can continue with step number two, which is data. For this, we're going to create an object named house prices underscore object, which is equal to sm feature from stats models dot datasets dot get underscore r dataset. And we open parenthesis. First parameter, which is data name, equals to, and within quotations, house prices, comma, Enter on the keyboard, package, equals to, and within quotations, AER, comma, cache, equals to true. So what we're doing here is we're downloading house prices object from our package AER, and with cache equals to true means that once we download the data, it saves it locally, so we don't need to go and download it again every time we run the code. Notice that this would download data and documentation within house prices object. Therefore, we create a new object name, house prices with only the data therefore equals to house prices underscore object and we get its dot data attribute to run these code lines we go ahead select them and then we press f9 on the keyboard so if we go into the variable explorer we see that these created two objects house prices object with documentation and house prices with only the data if we double click at any of these cells, we can see the data. In this video, we're only going to focus on the first three columns of data of price, lot size, and bedrooms. The reason for this is that we will have a multiple linear regression, the original one, in which the dependent or explained variable is price, and it's been explained by the independent or explanatory variables of lot size and bedrooms. If you want to read the full documentation on this data, you can do so with the following code line, which is print house prices underscore object, and we get its dot two underscores doc, two underscores attribute, and as it is a single code line, we just press F9 on the keyboard, and we'll see the documentation right here. So we're going to scroll up, and we see house prices are documentation. So then we're going to continue with step number three, which is the model. For this, we're going to create an object named MLR, which stands for multiple linear regression, equals to SMF feature from stats models dot OLS, which stands for ordinary least squares function. And within parentheses, we have the following parameters. The first of this, which is formula equals to, and within quotations, because it is a string, we have price as a dependent or explained variable. And with this special character means being explained by the independent or explanatory variables of lot size plus bedrooms comma we press enter on the keyboard data equals to the house prices object we created above dot fit the regression open and close parentheses 
So to run these code lines, again, we select them and we directly press F9 on the keyboard. And as we'll see, this creates an MLR object within the variable explorer. So then we continue with step number four, and in this case, it's going to be heteroscedasticity. And before doing the coding of Bruce pattern and white test, we need to create a new variable, an object which is named IBAR, which includes the independent or explanatory variables, therefore equals to the house prices object and with dot ILOC or integer location and within brackets we get semicolons all the rows from columns one to three with Python notation therefore we're getting columns in which we have lot size and bedrooms and we need to add a constant or intercept to this object that's a column of ones therefore we create a new object named IBARC equals to and we'll be using SMT feature from stats models dot add underscore constant data equals to the one found at IBAR prepend equals to true so that it adds it at the beginning. So we're going to select these two code lines and we're going to press F9 on the keyboard and as we'll see this creates two objects and we are going to double check the one with the constant or intercept by double clicking on it. And as mentioned, we have the constant or intercept, which is ones. And then we have the independent or explanatory variables of lot size and bedrooms. So once we have that ready, we continue with the first of the heteroscedasticity test, which is Bruch Pagan test. And before coding the test, we're going to write its equation. Therefore, we begin with the following, which is hat residuals to the power of 2 equal to hat gamma 0 plus hat gamma 1 multiplied by lot size plus and we continue the following row hat gamma 2 multiplied by bedrooms. So for Bruch pattern test we have the original linear regression and we get its estimated residuals which are differences between dependent variable actual values and price fitted values estimated through the linear regression. So once we get those residuals we can perform the second regression for Bruch pattern test in which we have the following all hats because they are estimates therefore we have the estimated square residuals equals to the estimated gamma zero coefficient which is the estimated constant or intercept from this regression plus the estimated gamma one coefficient multiplied by lot size plus the estimated gamma two coefficient multiplied by bedrooms so let's go ahead and code this Bruch pagan test by creating an object named bp test equals to and we have smd feature from stats models dot and we get the function which is HET, heteroscedasticity underscore Bruch Pagan function, and we open parentheses, and we have the following parameters. Our ESID for the residuals, they are found at the original regression, therefore MLR dot RESID, comma, and then we have EXOG underscore HET, and that includes the corresponding independent or explanatory variables for the variance. Therefore, in this case, we're going to include the object with IBARC, which is the constant or intercept, which is ones and independent or explanatory variables. And then we continue to print its results. So we're going to print, and first we're going to print the Lagrange multiplier, which is found at BP test and position zero with Python notation in the first position. And then we're going to print Lagrange multiplier underscore p value. And that is found at BP test position one with Python notation, that's the second position. So let's go ahead and run these two code lines by selecting them and then pressing F9 on the keyboard. So as we can see, this prints the result. First we have the test Lagrange multiplier and then the Lagrange multiplier p-value. This p-value is the chi-square test p-value with the joint null hypothesis that independent variables coefficients are equal to zero. 
If rejected, linear regression errors are assumed heteroscedastic or with non-constant variance. If not rejected, linear regression errors are assumed homoscedastic or with constant variance. So then we continue with white test. So we comment here white test and we're going to do it with cross terms. So again, before doing its coding, we're going to write its equation, which is similar to Bruch Pagan. So we're just going to copy this, paste it and modify it. So instead of gamma two multiplied by bedrooms, it's going to be multiplied by, and we're going to do it within parentheses, log size to the power of two plus, and then we have a hat gamma three multiplied by, and as we have cross terms, it's going to be lot size times bedrooms plus, and we continue the following code line. Therefore we have hat gamma four multiplied by bedrooms and last hat gamma in this case five multiplied by and with parentheses bedrooms to the power of two so as we can see the difference are the following we added lot size to the power of two. Then as we have cross terms, we added the product of lot size multiplied by bedrooms. And last, we added bedrooms to the power of two. And those are the differences between the white test cross terms formula and the one for Bruch pattern test. So let's continue to code it. So we're going to create an object named W test for white test, no cross terms, equals to again, SMD feature from stats models dot het for heteroscedasticity underscore white open parenthesis resid residuals also found within the multiple linear regression object mlr dot resid comma and in this case it's only exog equals and that includes the independent or explanatory variables for the variance again no dependent variable needed therefore equals to ibarc the one that includes the constants with a column of ones, and we're also going to print its results below. So we're going to print this first the Lagrange multiplier, comma, and it's found at W test, position zero, Python notation, therefore position one, and LM underscore P value. And that is found at W test, position one with Python notation, therefore the second position. So let's go ahead and run these two code lines by selecting them and pressing F9 on the keyboard. And we'll see again within the console, the results being printed. First, we have the test Lagrange multiplier and then the Lagrange multiplier p-value, which is the chi-square test p-value with the joint null hypothesis that independent variables coefficients are equal to zero. If rejected, linear regression errors are assumed heteroscedastic or with non-constant variance. If not rejected, linear regression errors are assumed homoscedastic or with constant variance. So with this, we finish with the code file. So we go ahead and save it. And with this, we also finish with this video. Thank you for watching.